<laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another week of the F Word Podcast, a proud affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network, which is sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. Hey, Vass. What's up? Do you feel like taking a trip soon? Yeah, I would like to. And would finances maybe be a, a thing that you'd consider? That's a factor, definitely. Well, to take that factor out of your life, Make sure you head over to Connexus Credit Union. Connexus Credit Union will allow you to save and put all your finances in order so you can take that special trip. Contact Connexus at Connexus Credit Union or Connexus Credit Talk, Connexus Money Talk.ca, hashtag Money Talk. Yeah, just go to Connexus and uh, they'll hook you up. I. I. <laughs> Is that an ad? You little sneaky people. Just snuck it in there. He's actually not. Spoiler alert. He's not going on a trip. Yet. I am your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony. What's going on, gents? Nothing much. He he uses his real name. (laughs) Yeah. It's the meme machine, sir. Oh, right. The meme machine. Ah, Who can keep up anymore? Like, come on, man. Yeah, like, you've had so many nicknames. What do you mean? I've had one. Meme machine. It was Lazy Canadian. Pick a name. (laughs) I've had three. Pick a color. Well, no one called me Entertain Facts when I was Entertain Facts. Yeah, because you called yourself Big Facts. Yeah, and you stuck Blake with it. Called me the, they should have called whatever, you, and you ran with it. Should have called you F Boy. Yeah, I still remember that when we saw Rogue kind of like Fuck Boy. Yeah. What does yeah. Entertain Facts stand for? Entertain Fucked. <laughs> that wasn't even a good roast. But everyone like I thought it was jumped. Entertain Fucks. I don't know. I think it was Fucked. Oh. Entertaining Fucks. I think that was like I think yeah, that's like sound... Entertaining Fucks is the yeah. one I thought. Yeah, no, yeah. And everyone like Nick and Michael all jumped on it. I'm like, damn. Yeah, there's a lot of people that jumped on it. <laughs> Gentlemen, this has been a pretty good week for us. Yeah. Uh, if you've gone on our Instagram, that's Ooh, at yeah, yeah. the F Word Podcast on Instagram or our Facebook Same at the F Word Podcast. Did you put it on the Lazy Canadian too or no? No. Just, I just shared it. Yeah, it's just this is a it's an F word thing. Let's just yeah. keep it like yeah. Okay. Uh Anthony put out a really cool video and it's like uh it's the clip of the opening and he did some nice little uh nice little work on that one. So if you mm-hmm. want to check out something and it was really funny. It's and really we'll take good. clips from this episode as well. And yeah. actually like do more. That's also on our YouTube video. channel, which is just it's eking so close to a thousand. Ooh, <laughs> it's been like three, come on, people. It's been like three years, and it's but eking. Facebook. The video on Facebook did actually like pretty. I think it was that like when I last checked it, like the day after I uploaded it, it was like just over a hundred and fifty. Which nice. is like that's pretty good. I thought check. it said three hundred and sixty-eight. Well, I, it was the last one. I, like that was the day after I posted it, so oh. like I haven't checked it since. Well, either way, it was a really good video, and we got a really good response from it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna keep doing that because that was really funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the pace that you can, you are going to university. Uh, I hope everybody listening to us is having a good day, has had a good week, and uh, is uh, getting a little bit uh, colder out there. So I hope you're staying a little bit warmer than you otherwise would have a month ago, depending on where you live. Because I know for us, it's been fucking raining like for yeah, five for days straight days, oh five i know I, I thought it was five. i noticed it was i noticed Sun, three days i least. think it started i think it started sunday no was monday it, was it monday monday till, monday tuesday wednesday thursday, till thursday. friday well no it's raining oh, sorry morning. it, rain it, today. it yeah, did this right. morning it was like wet no it was foggy it's, as fuck that's what foggy. Yeah, yeah 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 but it, even yesterday it was a trickle but like pro- from monday to basically thursday morning mm. Steady rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not and it was up. funny because like <laughs> Soph and I watch, listen to CBC radio in the mornings like we're now 80 years old. And so they always have like the one person doing the weather and someone talking about random stuff. And then so they had one person go out there and they were commenting on the fog that was everywhere. Mm-hmm. And he, the guy's name is Garth. It's like, yeah, Garth, I'm here on the highway and, uh, wow. you know, I can't even see the trees. From where I'm standing, uh, it's uh, it's quite foggy out there. A little bit later on, I'm going to head down to the other side of the city, and I'm going to see what I can't see over there. All right. Thanks, Garth. I was that's, just like, That sounds like CBC, of, all right. What fucking, like, what, what was that? Okay, guys, it's raining. I'm pretty wet. I'm it's like go Ollie the from Family Guy. Yeah, it's foggy. Yeah, it's foggy. <laughs> hey, Garth, I can't even see my fucking hands. I don't know what's going on over here. It's a slow news day, yeah. apparently. Anyways, so well, it's it raining was, it, again. It was foggy though. Like, oh yeah, no, oh, absolutely, like, pretty crazy. I haven't seen fog like that in a while. I like it. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys are having good weather where you're at. Um, and if not, I just hope you're good. Today it's shaping. All I really care. We're getting about. those swings now. Um, got some shout outs already. First of all, once again, I want to shout out Arturo Music Man. He's at Arturo Music Man on Instagram for sending us his It Chapter Two review, which Anthony, you saw It Chapter Two, and his you, review is accurate. It is accurate. So uh, if you want to check out our episode, uh, Bad Boys, that was last episode, episode 63, you can find Arturo's review. And that goes for all of y'all. If you've got a review, 
send it in at the effort podcast at gmail.com because we'd love to hear off you. Really I'd love to say your words on the podcast with my voice if you feel like it. Um, and also, in fact, wait, just to clarify, oh, sorry. you sent a review about a movie saying it's good. Nine out of 10. We're not saying your review. So yeah. just, just know that unless just try, unless we get 10 people emailing us, which would be pretty sweet. And then let's say Compile. a bunch of them say it's good. Oh, it's good with this. Then we can kind of incorporate it and shout out your name yeah. for being a part of the collective. You should probably include what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and an overall score. Usually spoiler free. Yes, please. Yes. Spoiler free. Or acknowledge our state it's a spoiler. Yes. Because yeah. yeah, that suck. Because um, then we won't say it. <laughs> speaking of reviews, we you got go. a request. We actually got our first email review hey. from Trevor. Uh Trevor oh, S. Yes. Nice. And Trevor S has a Instagram account called Music at Best. With dots in between. Music dot at dot best on Instagram. So you can find him there. And I'm going to try to find. because I There it is. So he wanted us to check out some of his music reviews. Which again is one of those things that I'd like to talk more of. Because music is pretty sweet. Yeah, we got into a good role last time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, was it last time? Yes, yes we times. did. That was oh, last yes, episode. Yes, yeah, that yep. was last time. So um, he, he recommended some. But I'm going to go straight from where his uh, his Instagram account is. So you can have an idea and a feel for what his style is so let's go with asap rocky test uh, purity this it's a song review from his album testing featuring frank ocean so it's asap rocky featuring frank ocean this track is called purity he gave it a nine out of ten according to at genius purity is the final track of asap rocky's album testing and the only track that features frank ocean purity finds an introspective rocky looking back on his life of fame and realizing how his busy lifestyle has made it difficult for him to find time for himself and his family. This is my favorite track off the album. I love the harmonies, the verses, and the overall sound. It's a really calming song with a great story. Frank was the right feature for this one. So that was the one there. So yeah, go to music.at.best. Uh, check out more of his music review. Seems more uh, hip-hop related, which is totally fine because uh, that's where I like to play a mm. lot. Uh, and I'd like to give another shout out. We've got our first Apple podcast review. And it was a fucking banger. I was, it wasn't just like, these are, these guys are good. So I'll tell you the story about that. Um, the just conversation podcast, you could find them everywhere. They've got like 60 reviews or something like they're very highly rated. Um, guy by the name of Mark Delaware, at least Mark, probably from (laughs) Delaware. I'm not sure exactly, uh, reached out. And uh, I had to listen to their podcast and they asked me to have a listen to ours. So I directed them to the latest deep dive, the Hollywood one, Mm -hmm. because the one with our weekly show, it gives a flavor for sure. But it's weekly news. So sometimes it's relevant. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, this is have a listen to this one. It's long form if you like long form stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they gave us a review and it was really cool because um, they compared us to uh, Joe Rogan. They compared that one. So that was like at least has that flavor. Not like we're anywhere near Joe Rogan. I'm not even going to pretend it because I enjoy Joe Rogan uh, quite a bit. But uh, no, it was pretty sweet. And we got a five star review and it's our first commented one. So if you go to Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review. I can't see it on like, I don't know. I checked it like when you first sent it. So maybe it's there now. Yeah, I saw it the two days after. And then um, Ethan, who Ethan and Ashley are celebrating their five year anniversary today. So happy anniversary, guys. Um, They. He was the one that told me about it. He checked on it the one day, wasn't there. And then I checked up in, on it, and then I found it myself uh, on Soph's iPad. Uh, so, um, yeah, that was really nice of them to do so. And I listened to their stuff. And so I listened to, uh, it was called The Marijuana Debate. Because hmm. they're, they're really, it's actually, it's really funny. And so one is, let me just go to their actual page. Okay. So the one I listened to was the marijuana conspiracy number two, which was really funny. And then the other one is questions about time travel, which I listened to, which is also really funny. Their newest one is questions and bad relationship advice. Um, they're a conspiracy theory kind of based thing, but not only. And they actually, when I like the stuff that I listened to, I was like, oh, it's actually thoughtful. And it's very, I don't know, it's super engaging. The host, you know, he swears and everything. And the co-host is a really good regulator for him. Mm-hmm. And so they, the the two of them, like she brings him down to a good level and is able to provide, like, because sometimes it doesn't happen that way, but she's able to provide some really good, you know, counterpoints and follow up points to what uh, the main guy is bringing up. So, uh, yeah, I want to give them a shout out for reaching out to us, having a listen and the fact that they actually enjoyed what they heard. 
So I and, think, uh, yeah, two like on that too. On, I think two years ago, like uh, definitely two. It might have been last year, but we did like a conspiracy theory like episode near October. Mm-hmm. We should do that again. Hmm. What was it about? I forget. I know we did the Mandela effect. Like I know that was like the, the that main was the one. one. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. It was fun. It was yeah. just fun to talk about because like some of them are really like far fetched. Well, and it's cool because they like, the, for at least the just conversation people like they're knowledgeable like they kind of know what they're talking about they had a good history of it Mm -hmm. uh from the stuff that i heard so yeah i would definitely have give them a listen uh and then last but not least i want to give a shout out to my boy robert bailey he's one of my oldest friends and uh he sent me a message saying hey man um i don't know if this is weird or not but i've like been listening to you guys and i kind of have you guys like i'm kind of loving listening to you guys every week and stuff and he thought that was weird and i'm like that is the nicest thing anyone's ever said and i was <laughs> having a super shitty day so robert bailey you just uh it was a really thoughtful thing to say and uh, i appreciate your comments yeah so yes let's get to it All gentlemen right. what's cracking well i saw a rat yesterday where i think first time where uh so this would have been near the south mcdonald's like where you could like go straight and the stealth on malls right there uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah so i was there i was like dropping i was driving my brother back from university because like we just have one parking spot and like he has class two hours before i do so i just drop him off early and then pick him out at night again mm-hmm. but i was just sitting there and i saw something move outside of my car and it was a fucking rat and like i've never seen a rat before That's gross. and it was like huge like the difference in size between a mouse and a rat like, you don't really think about it, like, when you just hear about it, but, like, in person, like, it's disgusting. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? And my brother's like, what are you looking at? And he sees because it goes over to the car. He's yeah. like, ew, drive. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> ew, drive. Drive over it. <laughs> Kill it. Like, that was the first time I've ever had a reaction to something where I actually said, ew. Like, <laughs> ew. Like, that's gross. Like, it was disgusting. It would been perfect if you both screamed like little girls. That would have been really yeah. funny. We and did. people would have been there to see it. Yeah. And recorded it in this day and age and then put it everywhere. Yeah, it's surprising. It was like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, uh, flash, motherfucker. Okay. Well, I've night, seen night mode. I've seen rats before. So in Rome, when we were staying, we were hanging out by the Pantheon, and there was like five rats. So when you walk up to the Pantheon, there's like this thing on the sides. And it used to be up, elevated, but then obviously it's Eroded. it's gone down. Um, and there's just like this void over there. And as we were sitting kind of on the left-hand side of the thing, there was like four or five rats just mm. roaming around together, and they're fucking massive. Not only that, Rome has a lot of bats, too. So, like, Come. from our room where we were, because we had a pretty sweet place by the Pantheon itself. It's a good area to be in. Um, you could just hear and see the bats just flying outside the window, and they're, they fucking go hard. They don't bother anybody. They're just above, mm. and, yeah, there's a lot of them. They're lost in Greece. Like, Greece was the first one she saw a bat, like, just at night. I'm like, what the fuck is that? They're like, that's a bat. I'm like, really? It was just weird to see them. Like, they don't actually, like, bother you. They're just kind of, like, floating and just, like, are flying. It's just odd to see bats. Yeah. So I guess in Canada, we don't have them here. Well, but in our no, location. rats are fucking huge and gross. Yeah, you so, don't want to mess around with them. And you know, I rolled up my window immediately. Like, I don't, like, if it crawled up there, I would have been, like, <laughs> left the car. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll walk home. My fucking work has, got, has had so many spiders. And not just little spiders. These guys are huge. Like, these things have elongated bodies. And it hikes up, and their ass looks like a little almond. Mm-hmm. So you know they mean business, and mm-hmm. they're everywhere. They're just they pop out of nowhere, and then they're just scurrying across. I'm like, those things are fucking huge. Everything's you know being what? overrun, the and BC are... now has that queen hornet, the Japanese giant oh the killer one, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How how did it come here? Someone but some trip. dickhead decided to add it to his collection. I think I don't Pro- know. Yeah, actually, I and believe that what it was. I no, I believe oh. that. Though. Somehow it got over here. My guess is somebody wanted to have it for their collection, and guess what? Just like in the Simpsons, where they brought over the koala, it escaped. It escaped, and now there's three of them in BC that we know of that attack humans and bees. So, so that's great. We need a plague. We're all going to die. <laughs> that is the plague. No, that is the beginning of the plague. We need a new one just to kill off. Like Thanos, honestly, say what you will about him. The guy had some knowledge. The first time. Hold on. The first time. The first time, first time, time the guy had. The second time, he was all about wiping everything down to the last atom. He was not happy. That's what happens when you just see people in their common sense that doesn't exist anymore. Well, I think he just naturally saw the flaws in his own plan. And because he was the Mad Titan then, he's just. Titans be tightening, tightening, tight, tight. Titans be tightening. Yes, that was that's. I feel like that's the most correct way. Yeah, to yeah, say yeah. That. <laughs> I don't think it's going anymore. Uh, okay, let's get some movie stuff. All right, bye. bye. What the fuck what was that? Start? It was like a borderline McConaughey, but okay. very bad. 
Where do you guys want to start? But you didn't send us our list, so I have no idea what's on the oh, list. Oh, God, I haven't sent you a list. I'm sorry. So just go All right, let's start. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess because I mentioned Joe Rogan, I was listening to Joe. Uh, Dan Aykroyd was on Joe Rogan today. Oh. Um, so that was really interesting. Dan Aykroyd's like super into ghosts and UFOs and Sasquatch and stuff. It was super interesting. Hmm. Um, but the little timbit that I got out of all the stuff that they talked about, it was just really cool. He's got a vodka as well with like a... Avion. No, no, no. His is called... Uh, oh, fuck. It's, called, it's got like some alien crystal skull type of look. I think it's called crystal skull. Uh, oh, yeah. Have, that's I, been for a while. Yeah, yeah. They actually that, yeah. pour it it's over actually a, a skull, specific diamond and people have tasted it and said the one tastes better with the diamond w- than without the diamond. Yeah, placebo. I, I thank know. you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he said... Because he loves Once Upon a Time in Hollywood so much that he himself is voting for it for Best Picture for this year's Oscars. Nice. That's fair. So that was the one timid I got out of it. And uh, I can't blame him. I think right now the only thing that's really standing out is that in The Joker. Well, yeah, but Joker, I was going to say, like, there's no other film that really, like, as that's been released now that has, like, rivaled. We haven't life. gotten there yet. It was not sure. really, I, even Once Upon a Time in Hollywood wasn't, like, I haven't seen it. It's not, like, a mainstream. Like, Joker is more mainstream, I'd say, just because, well, it is. Mm. There's no, like, denying that. It's but the think, Joker. It's, yeah, Joker. It's, it's mainstream in the sense that it's comic. Joker's gonna win an Oscar. Doesn't matter. Like I'm not saying it's gonna win the best one, but it's, like it's gonna get nominated for a bunch of fucking Oscars. Not having seen it yet, I don't know. But um, what I've heard, I hope so. Well, some film festivals. So it's not like just random like reviewer saying it's gonna win an Oscar. It's like actual like film, like multiple film festivals all saying the same thing. It's gonna win Oscars. So it's kind of like it's gonna win it's not yeah, for it's, nothing. It's gonna win. Uh, I hope Leonardo DiCaprio wins. I honestly, not having seen the Joker again, I don't know who's going to be able to top DiCaprio. He's from, only won like, one Oscar, right? Like one, like yes, the best, yeah. the Revenant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which kind of ended the whole run of like him yeah, getting shunned at the Oscars, so to yeah. speak. I think he should have won it for um, Wolf of Wall Street Wolf over Wall Street, the Revenant. Catch, uh, catch me if you can. You don't think he was good in Catch Me? No, he was good. I'm not saying he was Oscar worthy. I don't remember what came out that year, and I don't remember what year that came out. But I would say this one in Once Upon a Time is definitely worth, for sure, a nomination, maybe a win. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but yes, that was a little timid I got from Dan Aykroyd on Joe Rogan. Hmm. Uh, speaking of Joe Rogan as well, he had Bill Burr the day before his. Uh, Bill Burr had a special. Did you watch it all? No. I watched it I've yesterday. Heard of it. Holy oh, yeah, shit! You, you told me about Paper it. Tiger. Oh yeah, yeah I've got two specials. I'm gonna watch tomorrow. I don't have. I just got Sticks Chappelle, and Stones and yeah. both Paper and Tiger. they're both along the same themes. I nice. would say. You know, what? I'm happy. I'm gonna say. Well, I feel like they both kind of did. I, there's no way that one could have copied the other because they were touring at the same time. I'm just glad more people are being more like Open. ballsy and not just being a little yeah. bitch and like well, people censoring are, themselves. It, the thing is, is that they are they are maintaining and reinforcing the art of comedy. Yeah. Um. That's what they're doing, and that's what mm-hmm. they should do. I think as the leaders of the industry now, yeah, you have to take a stand about people that are trying to, imp- imp- um, trying to just take a hold of everything and control the narrative on every single goddamn thing mm-hmm. that's out there. Yeah, so I, it looks like comedy is just like the 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 leaders of comedy are bitch slapping all of that. Well, it's nice, yeah. you know, what? like, and they have the platform. For you it, can right? have a different opinion, which is fine. But like, once mm. you start like imposing your opinion that's on other people and saying say. like you can't do your own thing, that's like you know what? No, because that's like that's what Hitler did. Well, yeah. Like, well, not like to an extent, not like the same. <laughs> no, but saying, it, yeah. if you were wanting to break it down, nothing. What anybody's doing right now, by the way, is no one's a Hitler. Yeah, right no now. one is Hitler. No one's killed six million that people. I know of. Right now, I don't be ignorant. Something's happening. No, I'm I'm <laughs> saying based on the the yeah. language that people are using, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you're they called you a white supremacist. Yes, you're not. Uh, or they call other people Hitler. Well, guess what? Hitler killed six million people before he was actually quote unquote Hitler to that extent. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> but these guys are you know the one that that's what they did. They suppressed um they suppressed people's voices. Mm-hmm. Um, Stalinism, the same thing. Stalinism still so yeah, Stalinism went to the point where they would ask people, they would go around and ask people if they were happy with the shitty conditions that they're in. And if they said no, they're shot. They're they shot. Were gone. They were dead. Like it's the same with the Maoists. Like it's it was fucking brutal. The twentieth century should have taught us everything that we needed to know how to move forward. But guess what? It didn't. And the other thing that I'm noticing because of this and it'll probably ping back and forth because it always does when you pull an elastic band back so much eventually it's either going to break or it's going to fling back 
And I think that's what's happening right now. There's been so much suppression on the one side mm-hmm. over dividing everybody into tribes. You can't say this. You can't say that. Screw yeah. you. Screw this. You're a racist, sexist, all of that stuff. And now people are coming back and they're coming back with a force like mm-hmm. there is there is an army boiling mm-hmm. on both sides. Yeah. And the people that cry wolf the most are the ones that are going to be left in the dust. Absolutely. And now guys like Bill Burr who, and the thing is everyone's laughing. He was in London when he did it. He wasn't even in America. Yeah. And he was saying on Rogan how he wasn't sure how it would play, but he's always wanted to do that theater because Led Zeppelin played that theater. Nice. And he talks about, he doesn't just talk about the PC culture. He no, does. I, it's just, it, the, I would say the main theme kind of covers a lot of that. Well, and that's what paper tiger is, right? Cause the, the idea of Paper Tiger, just like Joe Rogan's thing was called Strange Times. Yeah. We talked a lot about it, right? But the idea of a Paper Tiger is this thing that growls and roars from the side, but once you like throw water on it, it's done. Yeah. It's it has it's it's not made of steel, it's made of paper. Yeah. It's like regular Mario and Paper Mario, right? Oh shit. <laughs> I'm so hip with the kids. Hip and with it. Yeah. So uh <laughs> Face Off is getting a remake. That's not necessary. Not at all, because the first one was I think I've seen, I've no unnecessarily idea. necessary. Yeah, I don't remember that, but I know like I've heard of it, and I probably I assume I've seen it. it. It's just one of those ones you just don't need to. Other ones, sure, great, but you don't need to remake Face Off. Like that's a, it's literally a one off. Like you yeah, don't need well, any more. It's a remake. Not, it's a remake, not, not a, a prequel. When did it come yeah. out? Because I don't. I think it would have been like when I was a kid. It's been out for a while. Would you say like is it ninety nine? Hold on, I'll find it. Because like remakes, late nineties, sense, early two thousands, nineteen ninety seven, John so, Woo. I think that's like Nicholas Cage, John Travolta. A remake. Well, no, I know, but the no, thing you is, don't need to. Though. We don't need to, but I think it's like okay, like it's not like unwarranted. See that that's grasping at straws, in my opinion. Like, it's like a I, business thing, so it's like I can understand uh, that yeah, aspect. Whatever. I think the big thing with that that is, it wasn't that big to begin with to that's warrant true. a remake. That's fair. That's a cult following kind of movie, like yeah. Even Nick, who's quoted it because it has the one scene that everybody knows, where the guy Nick Cassavetes is like, face. Oh. Well, Cage said it. No, well, mm-hmm. sorry, Cage said it, and then Nick Cassavetes, his buddy, was doing the whole yeah. Oh. And then they both did it back and forth. But yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Nick hadn't even seen the whole fucking movie, but he knew that part. Yeah. But I, I'm not. That doesn't mean that it's warranting. Uh, a remake because it was just Mm-mm. really like it's almost as 90s and as John Woo right down to the 5 to 12 doves you as you can possibly get. You don't touch get. those in the end. You don't. Well, you don't need to because it's not going to do anything. No. Well, I, I mean, unless a, they get a... I don't is know. there a big market for like hockey movies? Because that's a hockey movie I assume, correct? No. No. No, it's not? What is it? <laughs> oh, <dude>. <laughs> this is almost uh, as good as what I found yeah, out. Nick had face off. Face off. So oh, it's God. Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. John Travolta plays a detective. He and then Nicolas Cage plays this like crazy assassin kind of guy who ki- who tries to kill John Travolta but ends up killing his kid. And then so what happens is he finally Archer. That's who. Um, uh, that's who John Travolta's character is. I forget his first name. He captures Nicolas Cage's character, and then to infiltrate because he had placed a bomb before he got captured Not to really. infiltrate his crew. They had John Travolta get transformed, and their faces are swapped so he can be Nicolas Cage and Castro Troy. That's that's Cage's character, and infiltrate his brother who's in the organization, find the bomb, do it, whatever. But then what happens is hijinks ensue. They make a mistake and Cage wakes up from his coma and then demands to get his face, Travolta's face, on him. So then Cage is now Travolta. Travolta is Cage and they try to fucking do their shit. And hijinks ensue. So then Cage is going to his crew and he says, I want to catch Archer and I want his face. And that's the whole thing. For context, I want everyone to know that in my mind, I thought Face Off was like a Mighty Ducks. <laughs> I, I figured that once you and said the, a hockey, I'm like, oh, what? Yeah, and like hearing that, I'm just like, oh. yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I sign with you. I, I, I take back all my statements. So, question: Knowing that, yeah, are no, you more not, or no. less excited? That's not sound, I'm, honestly, I'm kind of excited though. <laughs> I think the big thing would be who, which which two people are they going to get to swap because Travolta and Cage weren't even the same body type, but somehow through the magic of movie science, they were able to make it perfect well, by don't their you know faces. If you put on someone else's face, you just naturally gain their More body shape. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. So I think it would be hilarious if they actually get Kevin Hart and The Rock to do it and try <laughs> to sell that off. Jeez. Honestly, though, if they did that, like that would actually be a movie that I could see like 
would be enjoyable to watch. It'd just be ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Or you find two people that just have no, like, they're not even similar no, in body Jack type. Black and Kevin Hart. Like, different colored skin. Wow. That might be too racy. Hold on. Literally. Jack Black. Yeah. And Jack Black and Chadwick Boseman. Before we move on, like, I'm in stats. And, uh, Jack Black and Scarlett Johansson. Done. <laughs> oh, that'd be more controversial. They've already done the hot chick with uh, Daniel Schneider. Oh, yeah, they did. Because that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> but in stats, there's this one theorem or something about, like, it's called, like, Chevy Chase or something. Oh, and yeah. the whole time he said it today, I thought he was saying Chevy Chase, like, Pierce from Community. Oh, wow. And I'm like, who the fuck is Chevy Chase? And it was just, like... Super weird Russian word, but I just thought it was funny. How does it spelled? It's like T C H. It's like a weird like or C H. I don't know T E B. It's a weird T S E H. Yeah, it's like it's just one word. I have no idea how you can even like. Chech. It's such a Russian fucking word. Chechudoma? No, that's another movie. Else, that's not it. Anyways, I no I, I'm actually curious as to what that means. But anyways, uh, yeah, face off is going to be happening. I guess we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, Haley Steinfeld could be Hawkeye for Disney Plus. Yeah, okay. I, I know her very vaguely. Apparently, uh, some Haley's. girl is like DMing all these like Instagram like like uh, accounts like Entertain Facts like that those styled accounts. Yeah, and like saying, "Hey, you should like post on your story saying I should be cast as like Hawkeye's daughter." Oh, she was the girl from True Grit. Oh, they should definitely have her. She was wonderful. She was also Gwen Stacy. She was. She is Spider-Gwen. wonderful. Oh wait, from Bumblebee too. Yeah, and Fuck she was yeah. from Bumblebee. Okay, I'm on that boat. She is hot. She's also and a wonderful actor. Yeah, watch True Grit if you really want to see it. She is fucking unreal. True Grit, that's an old one. Well, it's not old. It's 2010, but I guess it's almost nine. It's nine years. Holy shit, man. Fuck, that. man. That is old. True Grit, she must have been really young. She then. was young, for sure. Oh, okay. But, uh, oh, fuck. That was, uh, yeah. I, I totally forgot I who know. she was, but good for her. Why? I don't know. That's just an odd way to say it that way. Well, she was really young then. Yeah. Because I'm trying to think now. She's... Maybe in 2021 at most. Oh, not too far off. Nice to know. Oh, I had another comment here in regards to the Bill Burr special. How Should comedy is funny again. Yeah. I'm finding that to be true um, based on a lot of the specials because they were really, really, really milking the Trump stuff. Like, yeah, no, That I'm... was funny for a month and a half. And then after they kept doing it and kept doing it, SNL is... No, they're just still milking it, man. It's like, like you can hate Trump, but it's like a lot of people like my age that hate Trump don't actually have a reason to hate Trump. Like if you ask them why do you hate him? He's a buffoon. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying it's unworthed. I'm just saying have an opinion, but like know how to back up your own fucking opinion. Exactly. Like yeah. you can hate whoever you want to hate, but like don't say because he's a racist. Well, why? Because. I mean, he's don't get me wrong. I'm not he defending said, them, I'm just Yeah, yeah. He no, for sure. Like they're just well, they probably say because they heard other people say it, well, so yeah. they're just gonna be like, okay, that person said it, so ergo, I'm not gonna do my research, and so Trump is racist, and that's what I'm gonna go with. No, he's um, Our education system, ladies and gentlemen. The, the what's really interesting is I've been listening to a lot of people. I've, I've been listening to podcasts from 2017 when the elect or 16 or 17 when the elections were happening, and people breaking down how he actually was, um, and. What's really scary about it is that he's completely devoid of any other feeling except for pride of his own ego. Like, no matter what happens, you cannot talk about him not having money because that's a soft spot for him. He has no, it's almost like he's devoid of any idea, like the idea of the truth. And that's the scariest part. Mm-hmm. And he's got the button. He Back in the day when they had the nuclear um, oh yeah, that fucking tweet off. Well, no, it's not just that. I'm talking like way back, like when when the first uh, hydrogen bomb was created. I think it was Truman. He was the president, but anyways, they made it so the president has the choice to press the button. One person that could possibly detonate and destroy the entire world. That's not a good plan. No, like I'm for also, multiple reasons. Not even just because yeah. Trump's in office. It's just if some guy's a bad for day, anyone. Yeah, no, for anybody. Like anybody. Yeah. If you just go like. Fuck you. Boom. Well, and and that goes to the idea and this idea that I've been noticing now, too. We harness a lot of technology that we don't. We're harnessing technology um, and we are either because there's two ways of looking at it. uh, We are either children have the morality of children as a society or 100 year old person. Mm -hmm. Like a 100 year old person being introduced to an iPad for the very first time and they're just looking at it and they're like, we don't know what to do with this. And so I'm not sure, this is just my own 
thought process. I'm not sure where we're at as a society. If we just lack the morality overall for the technology that we have as a species, Mm -hmm. or if this technology is moving so fast that we are, in fact, an old person being introduced to an iPod for the first per- for the first time, it's and it's not a good thing at all because eventually we're gonna have to be breaking down these like these talks of morality and what we're gonna do with all the technology and just like they just like Oppenheimer tried to do with the president at the time, I really think it's Truman, and and we're talking Oppenheimer is showing an old guy this brand new technology. There was a huge morality battle on what to do with him then. I think we're going through that now. Hmm. I think the Holy Trinity said it best. Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. There you go. Oh, my God. That applies <laughs> totally. Trinity? Where, who else was in that Trinity? That was just one person, Uncle Ben. Holy, tri- holy Trilogy. Oh, Holy Trilogy. I might have said Trinity. Once. You did say Trinity. Okay, yeah. That's my holy Trilogy. Oh, okay. The holy Trinity. Do you see you in the oh, mind? Because I was like waiting. I'm like, what does Batman and Superman say? <laughs> Well, I was like, are you calling all three of the spider man with Sam Raimi? Are yeah. you saying you invented paper? Sorry. That was a, or was that was, how dare you? That was an office uh, okay. joke. Um, yes. Um, 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 um. Apple so, streaming to be cheaper. Than, oh, sorry. Did you sorry not to like, I'm not gonna, we can leave this to the last. No, no, no. Please go. We're talking about Monopoly today, right? Oh, we're definitely okay, talking good. about okay, I just want to make sure. We're definitely, sure. we are going in on Monopoly oh, and not even in the good way. Yeah. Uh, Apple streaming to be cheaper. It's like four ninety nine than any other streaming service. Yeah, it's the lowest. I think, yeah, five Oh, bucks. they lower their initial price then? I guess so. For Apple TV, yeah. Oh, Apple TV. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Apple, sorry. Yeah. That's why. So five bucks. Disney. Which I think they have like, uh, they've got a decent lineup already. They have like original shows and shit. Like they got like specials, documentaries. So it's like. Yeah, me neither. My brother is going to, which I feel like we're in the same boat. Well, Soph canceled her Netflix because we have two Netflixes for some reason. And so we're just going to get Disney Plus. Oh, Plex is, oh my God. My French teacher is the goat for giving me that like place to see everything. Speaking of which, like Tubi's been advertised like crazy. Like, oh, that, you know, they're making fun of the fact that you pay for this, pay for that. And then, oh, there's this free. Yeah, but you're going to get commercials. But also, mm. aren't they three like, times really that? shitty shows? Like yeah, I looked into it like a while. Like, two yeah, years it's, ago. Not it's not up good. to date. Like yeah. brand new stuff, and that's the thing. Yeah, it's free, but you get commercials, and the selection isn't quite up to date. Like I think they only get new stuff or old stuff. Sorry. Mm. However, that screenshot you sent mm-hmm. looked real good. Like yeah. that Disney Plus interface was really clean. They're probably yeah. They probably tried to be close to what Netflix is now. Which is fair. Because they know it's easy to yeah. well, and like, like I said, that's going to be the big deciding factor for a lot of people is that yeah, how easy that Netflix will thing. be. Mm-hmm. They got everything. Like they got all the stuff. Just the way National have... Geographic, mm-hmm. they got everything just in order. Good for what them. What is Fox though? Because they have, like don't they need, they also have Fox content. They had the Simpsons, didn't they? Fox tent. Well, yeah. yeah, okay, I guess not. Fox content. Well, yeah, like they, where's Fox in this? Oh, oh is that at launch? You're the Disney Plus guy. Is it not going to be at launch? Are you coming, am I the well, Disney they Plus? said that was just <laughs> a, you, that's what you've been hyped about it the most out of all of us. That thing was saying that it was. I don't, uh, I don't know hype, but yeah, it was I'm like a beta version it. or something. Yeah, like this it was the, a, like UK or somewhere like yeah. Netherlands. Yeah. So somewhere they'll, they'll probably have the rest of it. I am excited about this rumor though, and I hope it's true. Uh, it's the one I sent you guys this week, where yeah. it's saying that Disney Plus will have classic Marvel animated series like X Men ninety two, the best Spider Man ninety four, the best Spider Woman seventy nine. Don't remember Spider Man eighty one. I have some cartoons of those. Uh, or no, sorry, that was in Ninja Turtles. Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, Iron Man 94, Fantastic Four 94, Incredible Hulk, Silver Surfer, and Spider-Man Unlimited. I don't care. X-Men is going to be on there, yeah. and that's one of X-Men the best the cartoons the most. ever. I think they also said they're going to be uh, remastering them. You mean like, like to an extent? Probably yeah, yeah, for cleaning sure. them up, yeah, for sure. The Dragon Because that really remastered. doesn't affect it, to be honest. No. I remember that I saw the uh, Spider-Man animated series, and that was like... Fucking good. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't get into X Men. I tried watching, I just didn't like X Men. Oh, fair enough. I don't know. Uh okay. Uh next, next, next. What did I have? Oh, The Witcher is getting uh has guys leaked December seventeenth release date for the Witcher series. Um, I guess it was a deleted post from Netflix Netherland account. Fucking um, Netherland. that says that it's December seventeenth, so we can all look be excited for that to an yeah. extent. Uh Game of Thrones prequel is gonna be the House Targaryen centric called Fire and Blood, I guess. Surprised they're moving so fast with it because uh, they got us. So they got to keep the hype somewhat alive. Yeah, yeah the hype well, already died down. Blood, about, okay. Blood Moon is supposed to come out next year. It's supposed to air the first pilot on uh, next year sometime. I'm not sure when. And what's Blood Moon supposed to be about? That's basically uh, we're talking during oh, like Brad the Brad the Builder, Brad the Builder, uh, way back. Like mm. I 
hundreds or thousands of years before the events of Game of Thrones or before Aegon's Conquer kind of thing. So we're talking like uh, the First Men, we're talking uh, Children of the Forest and that kind of stuff, and then the building of the Wall probably. And it could entail the start of the Long Night. Um, so it'll it's around that, and yeah. So that's already in production, and they're supposed to be getting, I think, uh, a pilot next year. They're just going to shove everything down our throats. I'm mm, uh, I want to be honest. I'm excited. I don't plan on watching it. I probably will because I, I enjoyed the lore quite mm-hmm. a bit. Like I delved deep into the YouTube world, and like there's a lot of people that had a like, good stuff and talked about each house and then the history behind it and that kind of stuff. So, and I've read that they had that Game of Thrones encyclopedia book, and I read most of that and kind of it's kind of nice goes through the ages and stuff like that. And I remember reading that because I had to be at your place because they were like doing something. They yeah. were working on your place. And I remember reading a lot of like the Targaryen stuff leading up to now. Yeah. It was very interesting. Yeah. It, it's hard to keep track of like the fights, the battles, who's who's in the air, who's not. That's the only like tough part. That's so, the biggest thing for me. I could not yeah. remember anyone's fucking name yeah. or any of the past like events other than the main ones. And that's yeah. just like for me, it's just like that's the biggest reason I didn't like like the yeah. last season or I didn't really care that much as like you guys did because it's kind of like I, I didn't have as much invested. I just didn't know what yeah. the fuck was going on. I, I, I enjoy the lore behind it a lot. That's the thing, like the history behind it and that, the story. You find out that there's like a bigger world behind it. And that's ultimately what George R. R. Martin's created. Kind of just like what Tolkien did with uh, Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth and the whole that's, uh, that stuff, which has been around a lot longer. And now they're getting into that. Mm-hmm. Which Ethan and Ashley saw Lord of the Rings for the first time. All three, they finally finished it. Holy shit, really? They really liked it. Yeah. Wow. They said it was good. And he's like, I can definitely see the Game of Thrones got influenced from this. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, 100%. Everything. Yeah. It, he, if it wasn't for Lord of the Rings, there yeah. would be no Game of Thrones. Is, is he Suicide Squad? Oh, you are right there. Okay. Got it is right he here. starting The Hobbit, you know? I told him, don't bother. Oh, come on, man. Dude, I could barely get past the opening. That's you, though. Let the other people have their take. Oh, I yeah, told them, sure. watch really it. Like I, said, it. I, I said, do what you want. This is, this is my words. So do, do you say, you don't want. watch, or do you say, do what you want? I said, I didn't care for it. No. Straight up. But I hadn't seen all of them, but I could barely barely get past the first 10 minutes of the first one oh. before I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Well, then, whatever. Anyways, uh, James Gunn tweeted out the cast cast for Suicide Squad, which is including a lot of people. John Cena. John Cena's in it. Jai Courtney's coming back. Um, Nathan Fillion list. is going to be in there. Joel Kinnaman from the last one. I think Mei Ling Ng was the... Uh, Katana, probably. I have no idea. Maybe um, they've got Sean Gunn, his brother, Pete Davidson, my loser. Taika Waititi is going to be in there. They've got so a couple pretty... Marvel fucking people in this. Really to say, I'm like, like Sean two. Gunn. Uh, I'm surprised they let him be in. Ooh, like, I, I guess Elba. Like, I know that, but I'm just saying. Marvel. Just Elba's in there. Who is Margot that? Robbie, oh, is it Michael. Idris? Yeah, Michael oh, Rooker is in there. Viola Davis, of course. It's yeah, a big would've... fucking. Also, here. they are shooting in like six weeks. He says. Oh, wow. I don't understand why he said don't get too attached. Does that mean he's going to kill most of these people? Well, they're, okay, su- the they're cast, a suicide squad. With the cast this big, people are fucking dying. Yeah, yeah that's what he said. It's, it's a suicide squad. At the end of the day, <gasps> they're all going to die. John Cena. Is, what, I don't know. He said that. that. I don't want him to die, though. That's he probably why. will. He might. Just oh, come on. It's the Cena. Just to make a statement. And then at the end of the credits, it'll be like, John Cena, deceased. Fuck you, Anthony. No, Matt, I'd be if he just like comes onto screen as the first to die within 10 minutes. You mean, <laughs> you mean like the one guy on there that... Um, Fuck oh fuck! Name? What's his name? Yes, I know who you're talking about. He's the guy that can climb Slip, anything. Slipknot. It's Slipknot. Slipknot. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. And they literally had him there just so he can get his head blown off immediately. Uh, you sent me this one thing about uh, lesser entertainment topic. Uh, oh, the controversy over the states banning fruity vape flavors and people are bashing well, just all them. vape flavors. I think is what it's like. Well, I think saying. all vapes are going to town right now. Actually, my parents were telling me today. They're like, "Oh, I saw another report that people are dying because of vapes." From what I understand, two or three people have died. It's under a certain age. They don't know what it's from. It's kids C- my age. Yeah. CBD has something to do with it. Uh, in it, like the, the what they're smoking in it is uh, could be affecting them the most. And there's also reports that these people, individuals slash kids, have it with them all the time. Oh, yeah. Kids? Okay. So for context, as like, so someone like G who uses a vape, I would, I don't know. I'm not, okay. I'm not going to say this. Like, don't like hold no, me. I don't care. But yeah, I don't think you would be in any like danger. For the things that are happening to these kids, because these kids are vaping constantly, like every like possible, like minute. five minutes, every five minutes. So no, no word of a lie, every what, five they minutes leave they're class vaping. To vape? They're in class. No, they do it in class. They do it like they hide it. I don't vape, so mother, don't come at me. But they'll hide it in their sleeve and do this, like that, and they'll just ghost it. So they'll leave it in their body, which is awful for you to do. 
But apparently also, uh, they don't know if it's the vapes, like a hundred percent. Cause a lot of these kids that have got like really fucked up had, uh, like they, I don't know what, it's not like dabs, but it's some form of weed where it's like oil, it's an oil thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, they said like all the kids have been like that. They've like done both. So I can't imagine it'd be like I can really can't imagine it'd be from the weed. I feel like vapes are very fucking bad for you. So mm-hmm. I'd imagine it'd be from the vapes. But yeah, just I, I think know. it's a good call though. Banning the flavors, like I don't know, man. That's kind of dumb because they well, did that for... with cigarellos too. Like the prime times, like you used to have grape, mango, coconut, lime, whatever you wanted, basically. And the Canada, mm-hmm. Canada specifically, decided to ban them because that's what's going to make kids addicted to cigarettes and cigarellos and stuff. Like I don't think so. I'm, but now they're I, vaping. Yeah, but that doesn't. No one, make, vape, no, no one smokes. They did it with anymore. menthols too. They got rid of menthol cigarettes because they it was attracting kids. Just don't fucking sell it to kids. It has well, nothing no, to the, do with the, the thing. Is that the flavor has nothing to do with? They're gonna smoke it regardless. To me, like it doesn't make any sense. And yet, at the end of the day, like they're still around. You can still get it. the states decided to keep the flavored cigarettes. Well, it's some. Well, for like the for the states, it's not all like. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're like the focus is like tutti fruit. Like it's just a lot of vapes. They'll have like. Uh, their packaging will yeah. be like Sour Patch Kids or Skittles or shit like that. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, like, what's the point of having it that way? Like, you just have it fruity. Yeah. But like, what's the point of calling it Skittles if you're not trying to like attract kids? For which what is, like I, a fair point. Well, yeah, I guess so. From what I understand, though, like most of these vape shots, like you can create your own. Like they have their standard mm-hmm. stuff and then you can mix it's and called, match. It's called pouring the liquids if you use liquid. Like, yeah. So Sophie so and I have been using and we kind of don't. You can mix, really? Yeah, you I can make whatever yeah. flavor you we, want. We do a half and half thing. And by half and half, I mean like I only use my vape at work. Because mm-hmm. uh, we only stop smoking. You only because does it outside of, of Starbucks. Yeah. We only um, we stop smoking because it's just way too fucking expensive. Yeah, fair. And so these vapes, I've only paid sixty bucks. I still have the same one from day one, and I've probably saved like eight hundred some dollars already between the two of us, pretty which is fucking crazy. Um, but what happened in the beginning, the first couple of days, and then I realized it, and then I self realized it too, is that we were having it in our hands, thinking, "Oh, we're not smoking, and this is good for us too." And we had it in almost every five minutes, but. We also weren't keeping it in our lungs like some of these. Yeah, kids. no. But well, it's a, it's a plug and go, so you don't fill anything. You just put in little oh, it's a pod, and, go, yeah. and then once it's done, you're yeah. Some done. people get these like monster machines and stuff oh, like that. They have yeah. like a ma- like bottom. And the thing there. is, when you see some of these individuals, like they're drawing in, oh, lots. like it's the fuck, like yeah. they'll go for as long as possible, and then it's like. Just doing that act alone probably fucks up your lungs somehow, mm-hmm. taking a big, big breath like that. But then having that shit go in, come on. Yeah. Yeah, no, it just... Also, I will say this. I was talking to Soph about this because I had contested my parents. I said, do you realize that if I told them, or I, I wasn't able to articulate this to them, but I was able to figure it out after. If we had the same amount of news rollout as today, back when they found out that cigarettes were bad for you, It'd be the same fucking shit. Mm-hmm. There would be a thousand to a million different articles going off. Each one has a different pecking order on who sees it first. And then as the months go by, there's a new, it almost seems like there's a new article. But if you look at the mm-hmm. dates, it's an article from two weeks ago because everyone's writing about the same thing at the same time. Yeah. I said, no, it's not as bad as smoking because smoking no, is, that is true. Vaping fucking is like, terrible for you, for you. Vaping is like, it's not like it's better than smoking. So if Dude, you're doing yeah. it, like, yeah. And, and we're like, we're phasing all like the whole gamut mm-hmm. out, but we're, we're just weak willed to do it all at once. Um, but anyways, it's also the news rollout that's happening, right? Mm-hmm. Cause there's just so much attention on one singular yeah. thing. Everybody's jumping on it to get as many clicks as they like, regardless on if it's like legit or not. That also plays in a factor. It's terrible what happened to these young kids, um, the, especially the ones that have passed away. Like, yeah. it, it is a fucking tragedy. It's just people need to be aware on how to use it. And it's yeah. the same tragedy that was happening when people in like the late 60s were realizing, oh, smoking is terrible for you. Yep. And so we shouldn't smoke. The biggest thing that pisses me off is when someone will grab their vape and blow it right in my face. Nothing douche else bag. pisses me off more than that. It's such a douchebag. Should throw it out of their hands. <laughs> no, because I'm not like, I don't know. Yeah. It Anyways. won't do anything, honestly. Vapes are very hard to break. This is really interesting. It's okay. It's just, I, it's just an inconvenience. Yeah. <laughs> um, nearly 60% of moviegoers prefer to see fewer trailers in theaters 
A couple no of years ago, shit. we did a little. Actually, someone commented on it on our F that movie trailers video. Yeah, I saw that actually. Where I did, I completely bitched and complained about the fact that there are way too many. 17 point some minutes from the moment that your start time on your ticket says yeah. to when the movie actually starts of you sitting there watching. And it's not even just movie trailers anymore, it's all car commercials. Mm-hmm. There's and even after they do that prompt with those little toy or those little cartoon popcorns, yeah. there's one more. They have more car commercials after the trailers. It's like, you fuckers! Like I don't want to see this shit. Honestly, the trailers, the three, let's say three to four trailers, I'm happy with. No, but just it's movie the commercials. Trailers. Yeah, the no, commercials. that's what I'm saying. Movie trailers. The commercials, the commercials is where the problem is more than anything. The trailers, whatever. I don't think they ever have gone past five, and it's usually like yeah. they'll do like a couple of full trailers and then they'll do like teaser trailers in between so really the teasers are going to be yep. like all of how many seconds yep. versus the full trailer you're going to sit there for an extra two minutes for sure, sure. but that yeah the commercials have gotten out of hand amazon has probably paid a lot to be advertising there too mm-hmm. so there's that but plus any local uh advertising too oh my god it's just getting out of control yeah. it's, it's just getting too much also movie pass is shutting down tomorrow that sucks. I wish we had What's that in Canada. Oh, it's like, you just, it. so from what I understand, I know in the stick, a lot of people I talk to on Instagram have it. Yep. I assume it's the same thing. It's where like, it's like a monthly subscription. A subscription. Okay. Where it's like tickets. 20 bucks a month. Okay. You can see as many movies as you want. Okay. Like fucking go to the theater each day, watch three movies. Mm-hmm. And it's just all paid for. Concession included? No concession yet to pay. Son of a bitch. Why? Wow, that's, like, that's a fucking good deal, man. <laughs> I'm just the, 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just eat Skittles my water bottle. Like, well, when you think about you go to the theater and it's probably minimum twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it'll pay like twenty dollars a month. Fifteen bucks for a ticket. Yeah. Average. Yeah. Plus your concession. Yeah. Drink alone. If you just get a drink, you're probably already hitting that twenty mark regardless. Mm-hmm. So I myself, for a while, there was a string of really good movies, and it was worth to go see every weekend. Like we got a Sunday night crew that we usually go like on the late shows, and we went every weekend. Mm-hmm. Every weekend there was something to see. Uh, now, now in the later day, like later months, usually there's not much, and especially now until till Christmas. Well, it's not... Oscar season right now. Well, true, I guess. At least the Joker's going to kick off the Oscar season. Yeah, that's fine. But ultimately, there's there's not as many there's heavy like hitters movies. as it well, does in there, the springtime. There's no right? blockbusters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Other than Star Wars, well, that's like, I think the only one yeah. that is. Yeah, and I mean they've got that whole little December island to themselves for yeah. that. Yeah. I don't really care. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah. I don't know how many. I, all I heard were people bitching about it in the states. Like a lot of the pundits well, that yeah, I no, listen to. I don't know why it wasn't news. a good service. Well, I know. I assume they lost a lot of money, which is why. Because, again, mm-hmm. we're talking about why it's such a good deal. Like an insanely good deal. You know, yeah. they just raised the price up. Like, I think it'd be worth it. Like, I would pay 40 bucks a month. I don't think it had anything to do with the price. It had to do with the application and the like the way that it, it didn't work well. Did they? Was it MoviePass who was kind of fronting this kind of stuff and getting the deals? Had a, I think they had lots, like a different one. Or did they like Each team up with like Cineplex and they gave them a decent deal? It's like an Uber for movie tickets. Like, well, no, 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 that's not it. That's a terrible analogy. Never mind. Forget that. I'm pretty sure it's, just, it's like a gym membership. For yeah, no, there we go. <laughs> the gym membership. Like you don't like, go. <laughs> you can go use the sauna. You can go use the showers. You can grab a towel, all for one price. But you can. You only get to see the no, movie. it's like just like <laughs> the manager. Okay, man, like what the fuck? You haven't seen a single movie with your pass. I'm just doing the facilities, man. That is the fucking water fountain. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> there are children here. Wow. Um, and, and, and Sony for some reason decided to clarify to the world that the X button has always oh, been cross. known as the cross button. As far as I'm concerned, the X sorry. Button. So screw Sony. you. Well, I think you guys are what. 11 to 12, maybe 15 years too late on that because it's been the X button forever. And you know why? There's a triangle, there's a square, there's yeah. a circle. But no, one oh, of them wait, has a different. The no, the circle is an O. They said it's an O. What, what does it fuck? matter? What's the point of having then a square and a triangle and then an O and a cross? Well, like, I'm wondering, like, is there an actual reason they have to clarify, like, this the cross? Like, is there, like, because an X somebody... button something, like, somewhere else or. Probably to get some attention. Because like, the that Xbox way. has an X button? Like, what the fuck? It doesn't matter. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's an X. Well, I guess to that logic, though, if there's a square and a triangle and a circle, what? having an X wouldn't make sense. Well, that's the I, I only just letter. kind of said that under my yeah. breath. So then would it be a cross, like when you're playing that little... When you're playing that little game where you put in the like you can't you don't put the circle in the square and you put your shapes. I think there's one with a cross on there, but we just think it's an X. 
Honestly, I can't. I'm not mad anymore. That's they kind of make sense where they come. No, no, it makes sense. Yeah, but, but yeah. why bother? This is how many years later? Like, well, who no cares? one's gonna fall. I'll still call it the X. But like, it's kind of like, yeah, it's like, it's we're like, bored. Let's put this out. Yeah, <laughs> for the fact page, it'll be all over that. Yeah, it's just fact to post. One hundred percent. Um, um, that's done. John Wick four comments from director Chad Stahelski. I'm watch John Wick three before I get it spoiled, dude. Do it. Oh, I will. I watched John Wick three for the first time this week. Mm, what's still happening? Good, eh? Real good. I will say though. Oh. Some of the scenes dragged. Like some of those fight scenes were yeah. like you could have shaved off yeah. three minutes off two of them. I will say, like, especially the final fight, that one seemed like too like stop, set up, and let's do this move kind yeah. of thing. It seemed like it wasn't as seamless as the first two movies were. Well, no, it was seamless, but they did stop to set up. The, so so it wasn't it, seamless. Well, it, it was in the sense that it was a one shot. A lot of them were no, still no, 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 a no. tracking shot. I'm not shot. talking about the tracking shot. Oh, I don't give a I'm shit. Talking I'm talking about. about the movement. See, I give a shit about the tracking shot because that's the no, only reason that makes the movement. No, but that's what makes John Wick good. Yeah, I understand that. But oh. I'm talking about the technical, like them, not the technical, the actual physical, them doing the moves yeah. wasn't as seamless as the previous movies. What, and, you're and you're talking not, about one it's clunky. long. Yeah, but the thing is, in a lot of those scenes as I was watching it, they were still one single tracking shot. It's just they had to reset a lot more times in the other movies. Anyways. As opposed to being a sequence of 25 different moves, yeah. it was, let's say, 20 moves, then a break, then another 20 moves, then another break, but it was still following almost, a lot of them were still following a single tracking shot. I know what you mean, though. Do you, though? Yeah. Does he, though? I do. Anthony, do you know what I'm talking about? I zoned out, so I didn't get spoiled. I just oh, like... you haven't seen it, so I guess you can't really comment on it. Mm-hmm. So all, all I'm going to say is it was blocky. It wasn't as... It, his movement to do his maneuvers wasn't as seamless as the previous ones. I also didn't realize that it was like a week. From John Wick oh. one to three, it's yeah. only a week. I talk with that guy that you're looking at. Um, so according to you mean Daily Geek Facts? Yeah, um, he's an OG man since well, like 2015. I, I found Daily Geek Facts post about that Chad Stahelski said, and he's like, according to director Chad Stahelski, John Wick will not have a happy ending in the franchise's upcoming fourth movie. Hmm. And these are his so quote unquote comments. If you're this fucking guy, if this guy really exists, how is this guy's day going to end? He's fucked for the rest of his life. It's just a matter of time. He also said some really funny comments. I, I really appreciated them because uh, he was just speaking on how wacky the John Wick series is. And he knows that. And the character in there, the one with the short hair. Yeah. Uh, she kind of shines a mirror on kind of how ridiculous the whole thing is, which makes it even better because it's like. The director knows it's a wacky world. This guy kills 100 people for a dog. Really? Yeah. It's more than a dog, but that's what he does. Yeah. And just the whole premise is, is you know, it's wacky and crazy, but that's what makes it good. And mm-hmm. that they know that they're self-aware about it. I yeah. appreciate that. I'm still waiting on the Continental. I don't think we've ever heard. We haven't heard any news about that yet. The TV Nothing series. Recently, that is. No. Some guy commented under that post. I remember because I commented on that. He's like, a lot of fucks in that quote. And I said, there's only two fucks. Grow the fuck up. Wow. wow. My meme page is edgy. Ooh. Apparently. Mm-hmm. I also Some people say air quotes edgy. <laughs> I also had the pleasure, actually Soph and I had the pleasure, of watching Aladdin live action. Yeah, there you go. I believe it was last Friday. And this comes on the back. Uh, this also ties into the fact that their Aladdin 2 is already in development and surrounding the return of one? Jafar. Yep. Yeah. So it's gonna follow the J- return of Jafar. I really liked it. Soph loved it. But I really like the live action Aladdin. I remember I was super skeptical about it. I may have shat on it before seeing it. Probably. All sorts yeah, of stuff. I am eating my words. Will Smith was wonderful. I know this is late, but for anybody that's listening that has had trepidation about watching it, I'm telling you, it's good. There's maybe one or two things in there that's kind of like cringy, but for the most part, I don't know. Now, I don't know who else could have done the genie if, like, Robin Williams, obviously, having passed away, it's been, like, five years now, Mm -hmm. too. But I don't know who else could have done it because he was exceptional. And it was, it even put the button on the idea that I had where the Lion King had no soul. And Aladdin remake had the soul that the Lion King remake didn't have. And a lot of the Disney remakes... This one had that it felt like you're watching Aladdin, whereas The Lion King felt like you were watching Natural Ge- National Geographic. And it was, yeah, it was fun. It was good. The singing was good. It moved very well. Will Smith was 
awesome, but he didn't take away from it. And uh, yeah, super happy with it. I was very excited. And it made me hate Lion King even more. <laughs> I was going to ask man. you which one you liked more. But it's been <laughs> oh, God. Like, not even the same ballpark. Yeah. Like, the, the Lion King remake, again, had zero heart and soul to it. It had no feeling. It just had, like, it just a bunch of really well-known actors going in there, just saying a bunch of words, and then having these super, super impressive CGI animals meandering around on screen. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny, though, because... Uh, I'm pretty sure the Lion King is like regarded as like one of the like oh it's worst probably... off like live action Disney movie. not like bad like not in terms of like yeah. worst but like just like the one that's like kind of like people just don't really honestly care for. I had for whatever reason I actually had a little bit more faith in Lion King before any of these came out like Aladdin and Lion King got kind of uh, announced around the same time and so I had a lot more faith in Lion King just off the back of what Fa- Favre did with the Jungle, Jungle Book. Book beyond amazing agree and. He comes into Lion King, and I think it had a lot to do with casting. Guaranteed. I'm going to say this, and I will always say this. Beyonce was not the right Nala. See, I disagree. I don't like her. But, and this is you'll disagree with me again, I didn't mind Childish Gambino as Simba. Yes. He did okay. I didn't like him at all. So, and Chiwetel Delajifor, okay as Scar, right but person. not really. Like, like, like you've said a million times that he was in there way longer than James Earl Jones. You could have replaced James Earl Jones, Mufasa, and kept uh, Jeremy Irons a scar, and it would have been better. Yep. But it's funny because I, and, I had all the faith in the world for Lion King and zero faith for Aladdin, and like those up. two swapped, yeah. and Aladdin gave Lion King the middle finger as yeah. it went on the other side. I, I, I was happy for both. I had faith in both, but just a little bit more in Lion King just because we already had. because you have faith in things. Whatever, man. Have a little hope for fuck's sake. God damn. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> it's I like faith. the halftime spe- conversation between the, co- uh, the two players and they're yeah. like down. It's like, we're going to lose, man. What are you talking? We're only down 40 to 2. This is- we're still in the game, man. You know what? You know what? Uh, it, it, have you ever seen the... Re- you guys remember the replacements? Oh, yeah. Have you seen the replacements? I, I've seen. I don't Okay. So yeah, Lion King was like the first half... When Keon, like of that final game, and then they ask Gene Hackman what the team needs, and he starts be- beating his chest. He's like, "Heart, miles and miles away, or uh, miles and miles of heart, or yeah. whatever." And that was Keanu Reeves' character. And then so Lion King went away, and then Li- or Aladdin came and won the game at the very yeah, end. No kidding. That's what that's where heart is. Yeah. You can just you can tell where heart is. John Wick, full of heart. Everyone cares so much about that movie and it shows and it's beaming off screen mm-hmm. and it is amazing this one just felt like we're the coolest cats in all of hollywood right now and we're just yeah. gonna read our lines and not give a Is flying fuck because, like lines are like cats I, yeah it wasn't until you said it but anyways like i said beyonce is too cool for school the only thing with charles gambino is that he just has that i don't give a fuck attitude so and yeah. that and that portrays a little bit in the Simba. Doesn't he just kind of have that voice though? No, because the thing no, is, no, he's, it's his attitude. It, too, it's, like, it's not the case though, because he didn't give a shit when he was young Simba. Then he Akuna Matata'd himself with Timon and Pumbaa. So when he emerged as the childish Gambino version of Simba, yeah. he it wasn't he didn't give a fuck. He was just Akuna Matata, and like he's already transitioned over. Yeah. Right, I think it would have been better to have I don't know somebody with a little bit more jovial nonchalance, not yeah. the I'm the coolest cat in the world because fucking Childish Gambino is a fucking cool guy. Yeah, like everything he does is just effortlessly cool, and it just wasn't the right role for him. Yeah, he's done so many better things before. It just, yeah, I don't know. I wish you know what I wish he would have done. I wish he would have been the uh, community version of himself for Simba. I think that version of Childish Gambino Mm -hmm. would have brought an amazing Simba performance. That's that's my thing. Um, But anyways, I'll like yeah. I just wanted to say that uh, that's my late review for Aladdin. Sorry, Lion King two point oh review. (laughs) And and my John Wick three review. Yeah, for all it's worth. Um, Let's get into it. Okay, wait. No, before that, I just want to say this is like my shout out. I've been like binge watching Impractical Jokers. Such a funny fucking show. Oh my. Like I, you don't expect it to be actually funny, but I'm actually dying laugh. Like it's actually really just—I don't know how to explain it. It's just a fun show. Like all the characters, or not characters, all the people—they just seem natural. Like you just relate to them. Like it's fun. I don't know what it what is. Platform Netflix. Well, it's first season on Netflix. Oh, okay. 
I'm on cool, Plex. Cool. Yeah. In practical <laughs> and jokers. YouTube. In practical okay. jokers. Yes. Which I watched recently. Also oh, started watching we were, the kids are all right, which is pretty good. But I got canceled, so I'm sad. Yeah. I figured that out halfway through. I'm I'm preparing myself to watch Spy with Sacha Baron Cohen because I've heard nothing but good things. Oh wow, yeah, actually they've rolled on quite a few lately now. Yeah, and, but it's like it's Sacha Baron Cohen, and like he's probably shed himself of all the yeah. his characters. And I saw the trailer for it on yeah. Netflix. I saw I'm like, the trailer. Yeah. Oh fuck, that looks really good. So uh, Vasily, what have you watched this week? Yeah, I met your mother. Oh, you're oh, so that was my mom yeah. joke, the way you looked at me and like, okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, I met your mother. Well, <laughs> okay, Vasily, okay. <laughs> I guess it's that time of the show to, uh, to start bitch someone else, start yeah. bitching some shit out. Um, this almost would have been better if we would have piggybacked it off the Bill Burr comedy special. Probably. But okay. Whatever. Let's start talking about it again and cut it out of the episode. Yeah, Bill yeah. Burr, huh? Whoa, what's <laughs> that about? about that paper tiger? Uh, so Hasbro decides to fuck themselves because they didn't learn from the eight billion dollar laws that Gillette had. Why did no one stop them playing like, these? Look at them like you know, fucking one games. person thought about this. I don't care if they do all sorts of monopolies in the world, but the premise behind Miss Monopoly is reprehensible at best. Yeah. And I don't use that term lightly. Miss Monopoly is some of the most sexist shit I have seen in a very long time. And not because of the name. So don't, don't, uh, you listening right now, don't be like, (gasps) what is he talking about? I don't think we have yours. The only reason, I don't think so either. I think they've all would have left a long time. They would have left after my Captain Marvel bitching. That's when they left. The fact, I don't care if you want to focus on a female Miss Monopoly. See, yeah, that I don't care. There's Seinfeld Monopoly, Game of Thrones. There's all sorts of monopolies, okay? But the fact that men inherently make less money in this game than women, so you can falsely virtue signal your shit all over the place, is some of the most contentious bullshit I have heard in my life. Guess what? We all know that there's been gender inequalities. That is not a myth. But guess what? It's 2019, and if you look at it, a lot of this stuff has been rectified in a lot of different places for the reasons that people were screaming about five, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. A little late to the game. It's very late to the game, but not even in the original Monopoly that had the Monopoly guy in the front was there ever a rule in any of these games where females had made less money, let's say, in Monopoly than males. Mm-hmm. So to use it in a game like this is well, who the fuck is actually gonna like it's just terrible? Finish, finish. No, no, please. Mm-hmm. Like if, in, whatever. If a friend that is a female of mine said, "Hey, let's play Miss Monopoly," you're gonna earn less money than me. I'm gonna say, "No, what the like? What, what is this handicap?" Everyone, you're who's gonna buy it? Well, yeah, it's just. Well, I, feel, I, feel, be... I feel they're setting the people that do buy this, and I'll be honest, they're gonna set their gender back. Of course they mm-hmm. do. If a women women buy this for the point of yeah, we can play this and we can be ahead. You're set, you're setting yourselves way back. Mm-hmm. See my, my elastic thing. Yeah, yeah. But here's they're, the thing. they're trying to pull it back, and it's going to start flinging back in their faces. I did a paper on this, like, or just like an essay on this in high school last year, and it was talking about the gender gap and yeah. how like it is totally in pro, or I guess like just stupid to expect there to be or expect women to get paid equally as men, right? Like just right, like, like straight up, like easily. The gap mm-hmm. is closing. Like it's like through if you yeah. look like it's back, substantially growing yeah. closing. So it's gonna yeah. keep closing, but like to you to say like it's like still super unequal is false because yeah. Well, from my understanding, but like it's just it's closing. No, no, it is closing. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, no one's talking about um the the inequalities of the disproportionate enough amount of males that are picking up our garbage or keeping the lights on or going out when it's winter outside. Not just men, obviously. There's women in there. But there's more men in these that are out there when it's raining and snowing, keeping our power grid going. And all of these like jobs that are, to some people, menial, that are disproportionately male because males have been going into the coal mines and dying in there, getting killed on their job more than females, all sorts of stuff. Since the beginning of time, Mm -hmm. But that doesn't matter because a lot of the discussion from the radical feminists, because I do understand that there has been disparities before. Yeah, that's we're not we're not talking about those. We're talking about the ones that when you bring those things up, it's like, well, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, so you just want females to be represented in the top tier, highest paying jobs, not the ones where they're laying brick 
or drywall or in the sewers or picking up mm-hmm. garbage or anything like that. So what you're saying is you want preferential treatment at the jobs available for women, even though these ones are readily available for them. Mm-hmm. That's been an ongoing discussion. That's been an, a, a discussion from a lot of people against mm-hmm. females that are calling for equal opportunities for these things but the thing is they're also calling for equal outcome which i've mentioned on the show before is the worst thing you can ever do equal opportunity across the Mm -hmm. board to every single person i don't care Mm -hmm. who you are where you're from what you did as long as you love me sorry i digress (laughs) you should have equal opportunity at almost anything well equality is like and i say almost because i shouldn't have equal opportunity to go perform in the olympics because I'm a lazy sack of shit, and those people bust well, their Well, you asses. have the opportunity, but to state that you can just come uh, like right here. And I think go they've and got a. It. I think they got a vetting process. But you, if you wanted to, you could like do if, it. It's if like, I wanted to, yeah. I can go to like that first round mm-hmm. and then fail miserably. Yeah, sure. Exactly. And and if there's and sure that's fine, but that's... I don't have the. I shouldn't have that opportunity because I'm a lazy sack of shit. But for equality, like everyone wants equality, but like equality is everyone has their own definition of equality. Mm-hmm. So equality can never be reached. But it's like also like. Uh, if you were to ask a teacher, okay, you want equality? Yeah, they'd say yes. Would you grade all your students the same? No. There you go. There's no equality. It's yeah. done. If you think about it that way, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you talk. I'll finish this off because I had a good comment and it was really witty on my meme page about this. Monopoly took their totally gender equal game. Mm-hmm. And to make a stand and make a stance on gender inequality, they made a game that is totally sexist and unequal in, in, uh, to no, the opposite sure. gender. Yep. That yeah. is their answer to gender inequality. They solved it, guys. Yeah, they good job, Hasbro. Good job. Well done, you yeah. stupid fucks. Careful, he's uh, a hero. Notably, women playing Miss Monopoly make more in the game than men, an advantage that flips the idea of the gender pay gap on its head. This is from Marketing Dive. I don't know who the fuck these people are. Do we know how much it is? Like, how much more they make? Properties have been replaced by innovations women have held crucial roles in creating throughout history, from Wi-Fi to shapewear, and the game's traditional house house building system has been switched to establishing headquarters for new businesses to support the launch hasbro has invested roughly twenty thousand five hundred eighty dollars in real world money the they total amount of fake toilet. dollars available to accrue in miss monopoly in young female inventors and entrepreneurs oh never mind sorry no i take that back i thought they, in the game okay that's that's fine yeah no it was, um so this is yeah this is the this is the worst possible thing i think that you can teach anybody because the problem is this <clears throat> Are you wanting everything? Are are a lot of these people wanting everything to just completely flip? Do they want it to get better, or do they just want other people to suffer yeah. so that they can get ahead of it? Because that's not how that works. And this is where I'm more leaning to the idea that we are two year old children with fifty year old or with very new age equipment, and we have the morality, sorry, of two year old children. Where that is, we have almost zero comprehension of how to morally navigate ourselves mm-hmm. now in this world. And we are less and less capable with shit like this. I don't know. Go Vasily. Thoughts? I just hope no one buys it. Well, people are going to buy it. I think, I think women extre- have to be... The extremists? I think like women... Extreme feminists will definitely yeah. buy it. Well, then they're actually anti-feminist at that point. Well, yeah, that's that's a, that's the... Huge yeah. thing that people yeah. try and get across. But Which is what Bill Burr touched on that too. And oh, fuck. Dave it's... Chappelle touched on that too. And again, they made fun of it. They made a joke, but it's beyond true. Well, comedy is supposed they're... to be truthful. Exactly. There's supposed to be, there's supposed to be some real stuff to it. Yeah. I was going to ask you guys actually, um, are we, do we have anything else in this Miss Marvel or Miss Marvel, Miss Monopoly thing? Not really. No, I just think it's stupid. And honestly, yeah. like investing money in like young women is a good, they should have done that. They, like, there you they go. should just. They should make a Miss Monopoly, mm-hmm. roll it out with the regular same rules, game. regular game, introduce and take out the houses and put the inventions on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but fine. don't make it so men can make it less. Because this one guy commented on, I think you yeah, sent me the thing where he's like, well, I'm just going to play my... Uh, I'm going to identify my, as my, a female. I'm going to end- identify as a female and then I can crush, it crush <laughs> this rule now. Because that's the game that we're going to play. Yep. Because guess what? That's the game people are playing right now. Um, Those Facebook comments are always so fucking funny. People are on the ball, man. I love people them. know, and the thing is, people are getting super tired of it too. I yeah, think, it's, just, it's so shoved down your throat. And it's well, like, but the problem is the this: issue. what happens is when you when you result to tribalism, eventually your tribe is going to turn on you if you don't fit the dogma. This is exactly how communism happened. Communism happened. That's how thirty million people under communist re- regime under Stalinism and sixty million people under Maoism. Those are both communist places. They turned on each other. The people that were imprisoning other people were their very own people. 
where at least this isn't any better. Hitler was going after non-German people. Maybe he was imprisoning people that had harbored Jews and other people that he deemed that were going into a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. But regardless, they're all the example of this is not where the world needs to go. And the more tribal we get, the more we end up getting isolated from each other. (laughs) And the more we start steering towards totalitarian rule and we should have learned from the 20th century, this is not what we want to do as a society. Yeah. If Monopoly were to take back, like just take the rule out, publicly apologize, say, yeah, yep. that was a stupid fucking thing to do. Yeah, sure. I'd be okay with it. Release the game, like what we just said. And take handle. the profits and really invest for grants. Mm-hmm. Even make a grant off of Miss Monopoly only for women. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, I don't give a shit. But they should also have something for young boys as well. Young transgender kids, maybe. Because that's the other thing. So if you start doing for just women scholarships, Fine, off of Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then what are you going to do for the transgender community? Then what are you going to do for the males, even though people don't give a shit about the males? Then how deep do you go? Because the problem with these games is how far are you going to go? So are you going to go females? Are you going to break it up into races? Which females? Are you going to take Spanish females over African American females or black females? Well, no, you or can't. Under- no, but I'm saying, like, how far are you going to break it? Because then you I go would just trans. Say do females. Like, I wouldn't care about male or like transgender. It's just like. But what I'm going to say is not this. In that sense, but, like, what I'm saying is this. If you keep going down that route, you're going to start le- running into people and be like, well, what about the transgender community? What about the LGBT community? Well, I guess transgender is in there. So, what about the LGBTQ community? Also, which one of those are going to get it? Is there going to be a, a monopoly for lesbians? For gay men, for bisexuals, Probably for transgender. Honestly, they have a lot of Monopoly additions. Sure, but what I'm saying is yeah. if you start <clears throat> implementing things like that, then you're the more you try to separate, the more separation is going to come out of it, at least I think. At least this is what I've been reading. There's nothing... You can't win. It's by the regular Monopoly. For you're God's damned sense. if you no, do, and yeah. you're damned if you don't. No, that but is how I, the society... No, I don't think it's ever been an issue for games. Well, not board for games no one's like, ever said a board game needs no. to be more equal. But board just the way they went about equal. it. The way they went about it, like, well, if they just took yeah. that rule out and invested in... It's fine. You don't have to invest yeah, in yeah. men, because yeah. honestly, like, do whatever, like, you're a company. You can do whatever you want with your profits. Yeah. Yep. But the way they went about it, like, back... It was a backhanded, like... Yeah. gesture they were doing it, where they like we're gonna do this but fuck the guys no it's exactly what gillette did exactly. where all they were well, trying to this do one, I think was, was worse though no th- this one is one is and isn't um what they're trying to do is trying to jump on a bandwagon too late and them jumping on this late band bandwagon is making them look like a bunch of idiots bunch and assholes. clowns and ultimately if gillette taught us anything they hopefully will lose $8 billion in profits, too. And whoever came up with that idea will get fired. And they have to, quote, unquote, shift focus, just as Gillette did. Because that's the BS that comes out of just playing apologize that game. Just apologize quickly. Monopoly. I will not give a fuck. Just apologize. Say it was stupid. Take no, the rule out. don't even apologize. Game. Just change the rule. Well, I think you could say, listen, we under, like understand. Just take the rule out. No, just say uh, we thought about it. Yes, they're going to look like a bunch of idiots, but uh, we wanted to remove this but rule because we felt that as a society, we need to make things equal for all people. And we just wanted to represent not real estate, but women's innovations through, throughout history. That's me personally. If I was running it, that's what I would do. I would say Monopoly. And we're taking the profits from it and putting it towards this. Great. I just say Monopoly had like good intentions. But they just totally fucked it up. I don't know if they did. Well, uh, that's the, for business. Like, I know they probably like uh, realistically, I'm gonna say this right now. They definitely did it. They probably like want someone probably did want to do it realistically, mm-hmm. and then the company's like, okay, we can make money off this. Yeah, and that's what, like it's hand in hand. It's a business. That's obviously. what Gillette thought they can do, and then they lost eight billion dollars. Well, Gillette fucked dollars. it up majorly. Monopoly was at least okay. Like you could see they at least give a fuck. Like well, for the woman. The uh, the funny thing that Gillette did was that they didn't even the, the prices for women's products through Gillette were still more expensive than men's. Which was the funniest thing out of the whole fucking thing. Like, yeah, I went to Shoppers with Soph, and I asked Soph, I'm like, how much are those razors over there? And they were like $1.35 more expensive than mine, than the ones that I was getting. So I ended up getting a Phillips, called it a day, and I haven't looked back since. See, I'd say the reason why I give, like, more slack to Monopoly is Monopoly is, like, an actual company for everyone, Mm -hmm. where Gillette's, like, primary demographic is more male. Mm -mm. Isn't it? No. I, would, well, I don't. I just They've associate Gillette with males, though. Like, listen, I think most they, people they, would. Gillette used to be the best a man can get. Mm-hmm. That was their ad. But they also have stuff for women as well, well know, under like, the brand. Primary demographic. 
I guess if you look at it, sure, you can say that. Which is kind of like, yeah, it's like. Which is the biggest issue because they're going against their their main thing. Monopoly is kind of like whatever. So it's like. Yeah. That's good enough. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. (laughs) Uh, Oh, I was going to ask one more thing. Uh, Also, uh, regards to the Bill Burr thing, would you guys ever do comedy? I don't know yeah. if we're ever going to do it, but would you ever go on an open mic and do comedy? And I would if like so, to. So, what would you do? I'm not asking you to put a set, but what are some ideas that you would talk about? Definitely the guy pissing in my pants in high school, stealing That'd my pants and peeing in them. That would be like 100% on there. Mm-hmm. Just talking about, honestly, high school experiences because there's a lot of stupid fucking kids I know. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call any out by name, just like experiences, football team, just stuff. I, I do a lot of weird, funny things. That's just like. Working at Triffon's Pizza, like working at a uh, restaurant. Mm-hmm. So many things there. Just, yeah, I'd yeah. like to do it. Well, essentially, that's what it is. Comedy is just you it's elaborate observing. you elaborate your mm-hmm. your whole own experiences and maybe add an extra flair here. Well, and I'd there. probably throw in some altar stories, too, because <laughs> there are quite a few good ones. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, would you? No. No? No, I don't think You I wouldn't even go up there and try? No, I don't think so. I'm not like that. It's not well, I feel style. like since we're more like. You're not like that, but let's say you just you just went up there one time. And what would you end up talking about? I don't know. Like not would one you do, story. That would you, like you do like traditional Greek comedy where you talk about like? Oh, and probably the I most I know about. Said, honestly, that's no baklava. That's my wife. Ah. Oh. And yeah. then sell the same set at but, every single fucking show for five years. <laughs> yeah, I don't never change it. a single joke. Well, that's the tough thing. And all most of the jokes have already been done, kind of thing, right? So it could be, yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's one. There's guy, enough. Really. There, well, there's no. There's a few Greek comedians, and you get oh, yeah, most yeah. of the gist of it at the end of the day. And yeah, no, I don't know. I really don't know what I would do up there. No, I think it's different for us because we're more like we both. I don't know. I think you've done some public speaking, like more or less. Yeah, but I have a I have yeah. a directed point, mm-hmm. and I have a specific reason for it. Like, like to kind of do off the cuff and make my own yeah. stories, and kind of I'm not that way creative. I'm creative in different ways. Like I feel like since we're both like more like MC, like we just, you don't have a script when you MC usually do you? you just no, but it. I yeah. should have. Like See, my like for, wedding, like my, my wedding speech was a disaster. I think for uh, for Nick's wedding, we kind of was half winged it, but it was still fine. I just like yeah, because yeah, I, I did the I did the best man or I did the speech to the groom. Mm. I all, I screwed it up halfway, but I ended up playing it off, and people thought it was a joke, and that it worked out good. But I know my wedding speech. I just, or for yeah, for me, it's like so killed it. She did so good because I failed so hard. But everyone thought it was like by comparison, too. she was already doing better. <laughs> like literally, like the second she went, she spoke. I'm like, that's way better. Like thank God for that, dude. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I would do. I'd do a bunch of stuff. I had one this week, like on Tuesday or Wednesday. I remember thinking of something. And I thought it was so funny, which probably means it would have bombed if I tried it on stage. But it was one of those ones that I was like, oh, yeah, I should write this down. Something happened. Didn't write it down. Don't even remember what it oh, was look, even about. Candy. Ooh, piece candy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all. Mm-hmm. Unless you gents have anything else. Well, there's that little tidbit I sent you that, under that interesting fact that oh, today that. is Friday the 13th. Oh, yes. And it's also... But when people are going to be listening to this, it's actually Saturday the 14th or after. Well, it doesn't matter. Today when we're recording is Friday the 13th. Yeah. It is also a full moon, which a apparently won't happen moon. again for another yeah, like 30 years, they say. Is it 30? Which is very interesting. Did you send it to the group? I did send it to the group. So you didn't make the list. Wasn't that Hold entertaining? On. Oh, also what I thought was really funny is <laughs> we talked about you getting your job at GameStop potentially and they're closing 200 stores in America. Oh, yeah, yeah. Haha, <laughs> uh-huh, but uh-huh. it uh-huh. should not affect Canada. No, I don't think so. And also the one I'm like going to have the job for or potentially have the job for is like the best one in our city. So they're going to keep, realistically, they should probably keep one, right, in a city. Yeah, So that would be sure. the one they keep. Did you ask? No, I, oh. he's king. He's coming back from, like, Vancouver tomorrow, so. Oh, no, but you didn't ask that tidbit. Like, like hey, are you guys going to be affected by well, it? Well, I asked Jesse, and he said, like, no. 30 more and years. And Nick doesn't think so either. 30, yeah, yeah. 2049. 2049. For Which what? is pretty oh, interesting. Yeah. That full moon thing. Yeah. yeah. The Which, I, I like those types of facts. They're kind of interesting kind of thing. Oh, no. So you that's say they're night. entertaining in them? nature? It's today. It's Friday the 13th, and it's a full moon. And again, some people... Those who are superstitious about it, there's, uh, I read up a little bit about, there's like, uh, actually the Chive had a nice little things like, you know, history of the the 13 mm-hmm. and stuff like that and how it came about. And actually they say it's from the Bible that. Uh, yeah, don't you remember Jason coming out one time? The, what? In the Bible? Yeah, I know. No. Oh, okay. No, it has to do with the Last Supper kind of oh. thing where there's an extra, like, you don't have 13 guests at a table. Mm. It's bad luck. And that's where it was. It was like Jesus and his 12 disciples and Judas was the war and he was 13. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have an even number of guests. So it's like that's where apparently it originated. And then there's other things kind of breaking off. We have three here. 
Yeah, that still doesn't count. Okay. Jesus. You know, I'm not superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not superstitious, but no. I am a little, a little stitious. <laughs> I saw that coming a mile away, you <laughs> dork. Oh, All right, God. that's it. Let's yeah. call her. Let's call her. Call her, call her. We don't uh, again, another, uh, I'd like to give a shout out again to Trevor S at uh, music.at.best on Instagram for sending us uh, giving sending us towards his page and so we can read one of his re- or two of his reviews his rap reviews so check him out on Instagram the Just Convo podcast as well for uh, breaking us through on the Apple podcast uh, reviews if you have li- are listening to this show and you like what you hear uh, if you want to drop us a rating and if you're so inclined to drop us a comment that would be really really awesome because uh, we haven't had one and we've been doing this thing for about two and a half years so it's nice to it's nice that people actually like what we're doing it feels mm-hmm. good um yeah not gonna lie at all i'm super happy and uh sorry i just blanked there and also to robert bailey for giving that great comment uh next week we won't be doing our live show anthony and i are going to be recording a deep dive episode and if you're so inclined and interested in growing an instagram page he's going to tell you how he went from zero to eighty thousand and uh from there uh, and it was actually 78.9 sorry 78.9 got caught blocked me and uh, we're just going to talk about that and a bunch of other stuff and uh, probably end up del- delving into the origins of the F word, really, mm-hmm. uh, based off of that. Well, it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, so look out for that next week. That'll be a deep dive there. No live show. So deep. So... Well, we haven't had a live show in like a week. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, before. sorry, not live show. A regular oh. weekly news show. Our, what what, what is this even more? Just a regular podcast. Yeah. Our weekly podcast. Um. And that's it. So, from wherever you're listening from. From the faces, from the places. It's your boy. I, I don't like that one anymore. Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Single Podbean, tier. Radio Public, or if you find us on YouTube right now, or if you found us on the SAS Podcast Network website, uh, thank you so much for wherever you're listening from. We really, 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 really appreciate it. And drop us a like, a comment, or a rating on any of those if you're so inclined. Only if it's good. Well, we'd appreciate the good ones. If not, you can always email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com to let us know why. You can find me on Instagram at the F words G. Uh, we're, no, that's Twitter. Or sorry, you can find me on Twitter at the F words G on Instagram, the F word podcast. You can go to the lazy Canadian on Instagram as well to find Anthony and his memes. Only if you're not going to report them. Bitch. Only if you don't report them. <laughs> and um, that's it. That's it for another week. Again, uh, this is the F word part of the SAS podcast network. Sponsored by Connexus Credit Union. Hashtag money talk. I'm G. It's your boy, the meme machine. It's Vass. And we are out. Awesome. <laughs>